Okay, now the next the next thing I want to say is something also very very useful, which is that uh, in general the um, eigenvalues of a matrix are roots of the of its characteristic polynomial. Okay, but for Hermitian symmetric matrices we can write the eigenvalues of a matrix as solutions to optimization problems. Okay, and that different way of looking at eigenvalues of Hermitian symmetric matrices is called the variational characterization. of the eigenvalues of Hermitian matrices. Variational characterization just means that it is the solution to an optimization problem by varying some cost function and looking for um, local minima, local maxima, saddle points of this cost function, you can identify all the eigenvalues of the matrix. Okay, so uh, recall that the eigenvalues of a Hermitian symmetric matrix are all real. So we can consider ordered eigenvalues. Of Hermitian matrix A, we'll, uh, we'll order them in this order. So we'll call lambda min or lambda 1 to be the smallest eigenvalue and that is less than or equal to lambda 2 less than or equal to etc lambda n is the largest eigenvalue so we'll consider ordered consider ordered eigenvalues like this so we have the following theorem and this is called the rayleigh ritz theorem So let A and C to the n cross n be Hermitian. Then lambda 1 times x Hermitian x is less than or equal to x Hermitian A x is less than or equal to lambda n summation x for every x in c to the n. What this means is that if I consider for any x in c to the n, if I consider the quantity x summation ax, that's lower bounded by lambda 1 times x summation x and upper bounded by lambda n times x summation x. And in fact, the, both these lower bound and the upper bound are achievable, and you can achieve them by setting x to be the eigenvector corresponding to the smallest and largest eigenvec uh, eigenvalues, respectively. So basically, we have that lambda max is equal to lambda n, which is equal to the max over all non-zero x's of x Hermitian a x over x Hermitian x, but then I can always, so if I scale x by some constant, the numerator scales by that constant modulus squared and the denominator also scales by that constant modulus squared. And so I can also write this as max over all x such that x Hermitian x equals one of x Hermitian ax. So this is what you would call an unconstrained optimization problem, except there's a small constraint that x cannot be equal to zero. And this is a constrained optimization problem. So I can find out lambda n by solving this optimization problem, which is to maximize x Hermitian a x subject to x Hermitian x being equal to one. And similarly, I can write lambda min equal to lambda one equal to the min over all x not equal to zero x Hermitian a x divided by x Hermitian x which is equal to the min 
over x Hermitian x equals 1 x Hermitian ax. Okay, so let's see this. This is a very important result which we will use many times in the coming classes. So if A is Hermitian, that means that there exists a unitary U such that um, and um, yeah, as, such that A equals U lambda U Hermitian where lambda is a diagonal matrix containing the eigenvalues along the diagonal. Okay, now consider for any x in C to the n, x Hermitian Ax is the same as x Hermitian u lambda u Hermitian x which is of course equal to u Hermitian x Hermitian times lambda times u Hermitian x. Now lambda here is the diagonal matrix, so I can expand this out and write this as sigma i equal to 1 to n lambda i times u Hermitian x and then I take the ith component of it and then mod square. Okay, and each of these terms is non-negative. Okay, so that means that uh, if I'm take, taking a linear combination of these terms scaled by lambda i's, if I replace all these lambda i's by lambda min, that will be a lower bound on whatever value this can achieve. And if I replace all these values by lambda max, that will be an upper bound on whatever this can achieve. So, so that means that uh, lambda min times summation i equal to 1 to n mod u Hermitian x ith component squared is less than or equal to x Hermitian ax is less than or equal to sigma i equal to 1 to n lambda i mod sorry this is equal to this, so I wanted to write lambda max sigma i equal to 1 to n mod u Hermitian x ith component square. And um, because u is unitary, if I take this summation, This summation is nothing but the summation of mod xi square, which is x Hermitian x. So sigma i equal to 1 to n u Hermitian x i squared is equal to, I can write this, the other way to think about this is that it is uh, ux Hermitian ux, which is x Hermitian u u Hermitian x, and u u Hermitian is equal to the identity matrix for uh, u being unitary, and so this is nothing but x Hermitian x. Okay, and so <coughs> substituting that in here, I get lambda min times x Hermitian x is which is equal to lambda 1. So lambda min is the same as lambda 1 in my notation. x Hermitian x is less than or equal to x Hermitian ax is less than or equal to lambda n times x Hermitian x, which is equal to lambda max x Hermitian x. Lambda max is the same as lambda min, as lambda n by my notation. Okay, so we'll call this star for later use. 
Now, in so we found these bounds. Now, when can this equality be attained here and here? So equality can be attained by choosing x equal to the eigenvector corresponding to lambda 1 for the lower inequality, the first one. and equal to the eigenvector corresponding to lambda n for the upper inequality. That's this part here. Further, um, from, from this equation, for x not equal to 0, um, x Hermitian Ax over x Hermitian x, I'm just taking x Hermitian x to the other side, and that is less than or equal to lambda max, or lambda n with equality when x is an eigenvector of a corresponding to lambda n and similarly x Hermitian a x over x Hermitian x is greater than or equal to lambda 1 with equality when x is an eigenvector of a corresponding to lambda 1. So this, these two in turn imply that the max, so this is always less than or equal to this, and it retains equality when x is an eigenvector. So um, then what this means is that max over x not equal to 0, so it's an upper bound that is achievable. So x Hermitian a x over x Hermitian x is equal to lambda n and min over x not equal to 0 of x Hermitian a x over x Hermitian x is equal to lambda 1. So, and finally, if x is not equal to 0, then uh, if, uh, if f of x equals um, x Hermitian a x, over x Hermitian x, then f of alpha x is alpha star x Hermitian a alpha x divided by alpha star x Hermitian alpha x, which is equal to mod alpha square times x Hermitian a x divided by mod alpha square x Hermitian x and um, alpha squares cancel each other and so this is equal to f of x. So basically I can solve these optimization problems equivalently by considering, I can just scale any non-zero x, I can just scale it to have unit norm, and so can equivalently solve um, by um, or 
another over x l2 non equals 1 to get max x such that x l2 equals 1 x Hermitian a x equals lambda n and min over x such that non x l2 equals 1 x Hermitian a x equals lambda 1 okay so that's basically the proof of this theorem so geometrically what's happening is that uh, the largest eigenvalue is the largest scaling that can happen uh, to the norm uh, uh, or it's the largest value of x Hermitian a x as I vary x over the unit sphere unit uh, complex n dimensional sphere and uh, lambda one is the smallest value of x Hermitian a x as I vary x over the uh, complex unit sphere in n dimensions. Okay, so um, so that so that's this result. So this Rayleigh-Ritz theorem. I'll go through the statement of the theorem once again because it's uh, oops, undo and undo, undo. Okay, this result is very very crucial, and we'll be using it quite extensively. So if A is a Hermitian matrix, then um, lambda 1 times x Hermitian x is a lower bound on x Hermitian a x and lambda n times x Hermitian x is an upper bound on x Hermitian a x for all x in C to the n. So for example, I mean this, the fact that the matrix is Hermitian is crucial for this result to hold. If a is not Hermitian, then uh, this result need not hold. So just to give you a silly example to illustrate that, um, we go back to our favorite uh, defective matrix. So if I take um, n equal to 0, 1, 0, 0, and if I take x equal to 1 over square root of 2 and 1 over square root of 2, then if I compute x Hermitian nx, that's going to be equal to 1 over square root of 2 times 1 over square root of 2. So that is equal to half, which is actually greater than 0, which is all the eigenvalues of A. So in other words, the inequality required by the Rayleigh-Ritz theorem does not hold for this example. OK, so um, also from this, um, the fact that lambda 1 x x, x Hermitian x is a lower bound on x Hermitian a x and lambda n times x Hermitian x is an upper bound on x Hermitian a x, we have the following uh, eigenvalue inclusion result. So a is again a Hermitian matrix and uh, x is some vector in C to the n which is non-zero then let alpha be defined as x Hermitian a x over x Hermitian x then there is at least one eigenvalue of a Um, in minus infinity alpha and at least one eigenvalue 
of A in alpha infinity. Okay, because if I take an arbitrary x, this x emission a x over x emission x is going to be between lambda 1 and lambda n. And so there is at least one eigenvalue to the left of this thing, including the point alpha. Okay, and there is at least one eigenvalue to the right of this thing, including the point alpha. Okay. Now, um, of course, this result uh, talked about uh, essentially bounding x emission a x in terms of the smallest and largest eigenvalues of the matrix A. And uh, so one could wonder what about the other eigenvalues? So um, can we can we also develop uh, variational characterizations for, for example, lambda 2, lambda 3 and the other eigenvalues? Turns out the answer is yes. And uh, that's another very cool theorem that we will cover in the next class, okay, Kuren-Fisher theorem.